Hello and welcome to the first lecture of the course of Government and Politics. This lecture has been produced for the students of World University of Bangladesh, Department of Law. And today's lecture is titled Introduction to Government and Politics. I am Muhammad Tahmidul Islam, lecturer, Department of Law, World University of Bangladesh, and I will be conducting the course. So let's begin. Our topics of discussion today are the meaning of government. So in this part, we're going to talk the preliminary stuff about what a government is. And then we're going to talk about the basic understanding of politics. So we're going to introduce you to what politics is. And then we're going to talk about the nature and scope of government. And lastly, the necessity of learning government and politics as a course. So let's begin. Meaning of government. So the word government originated from the Greek verb kubernau. I may be mispronouncing here, but it is derived from the Greek word, which means the steering wheel of a ship. So every ship and every car and every vehicle requires a steering wheel or a steering mechanism through which a person drives that vehicle. So if we compare the state or a country to a vehicle, we need a steering wheel or a steering mechanism with which we can control the state. So government is actually working as a steering wheel for the state. Government is a structure or an organization which exercises control or authority over a group of people within a specifically defined territory. So this is also a definition, a part of the definition of government, in which it is stated that government is a structure or it's a mechanism. And it is an organization which has the power to control the people and it has the authority to control the territory in which the people live in. It is the government that has the power to enact and enforce laws over the people it governs or rules. So government has the power to enact rules or laws which are said to be or which are applicable within the territory of that state as supreme laws. And then, therefore, the government is the only authority within a country which has the power to use force or violence within a legal framework. So, in civilized society, we see that it is only the government that has the power to control the people and has the power to use legal force or legal violence if a person disobeys the law that person shall suffer certain punishment and that punishment can be in some cases in certain cases it can be brutal it can be uh, the denial of life if a person kills another person it is usual for a country to enact laws that says that if you kill someone your right to life will be infringed so that infringement is done only by the government and it is done through the laws there are currently 193 countries in the world all of these are ruled by their respective governments so we can see that there are states and there are governments for those states so without a government no state can prosper no state can properly function the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next, Abraham Lincoln. So Abraham Lincoln was the uh, one of the most famous American president who actually unified the American South and American North. And he said that in the schoolroom, one generation, what the one generation is being taught, they will implement those teachings in the next generation when they are in the government. So I think this is also an important point to note that what we are learning in the schoolroom now, we will implement it 
in future so that is why we need to learn a lot more about what government is and how the government works so now let's talk a few things about the basic understanding of politics the word politics comes from the latin word polis which means city-state in the ancient greek period there were many independent city-states having their own systems of governance so there were uh, in the ancient times there were many kinds of societies but city-states were the were the medium of development where people came from all over the country and they gathered in a place where they could trade with each other and they could form a bigger uh, bigger village of some sorts which had a complex structure of governance so in the greek period we see that athens uh, we see sparta and we see many other states uh, they were not really as big as states now they were small so that is why they are called city states they are city based states therefore the word politics mean meant anything related to the affairs of the police or the city states so to the greeks politics the word politics meant that any political affair relating to the city states however in modern times politics means the act of gathering power to make decision in a group environment especially regarding countries so in modern times we use the word politics in many many places and in by many meanings it has a lot of meaning we use politics in the office we say office politics and a person may use politics in their social activities as well so politics whatever meaning that it has the main act of politics is the act of gathering power if the act of gaining power to influence the decision making process where there is power to gain human beings employ the means and methods of politics to take advantage of that power to achieve their personal or societal goals so human beings are political animal and uh, which is said by the aristotle by aristotle who was one of the most famous greek philosophers in his book politics page one he said that man is by nature a political animal so people use politics to gain power and it is in somewhat their nature the act of politics consists of negotiation strategy inspiration and war so if you want to use politics you have to have the power to negotiate properly you have to have some sort of strategy and you must have the power to inspire others and also you you will be facing a lot of uh, adversaries in your in your um, goal to gain political power and then you'll have to wage war against them so you must know how to fight others so you must have negotiation strategy and you have you must have uh, or an overall strategy you must be able to inspire others and you must be able to wage war against others and politics is not a science but an art Otto von Bismarck Germany's first chancellor who unified 39 individual states into one German nation through a series of wars so Otto von Bismarck uh, is called to be one of the greatest Germans in the history of Germany who unified 39 individual German states which were fractured or fra fractioned under one German nation and he said that politics is not a science but also but actually an art not also but actually an art so by this statement we understand that if we are to use politics we should not uh, we should not rely upon the data that much it is not always about data it is about the perception of the people it is about the uh, element of inspiration to the people so that is why the numbers don't always add up when it comes to politics one of the penalties of for refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors plato so another uh, famous uh, 
Greek philosopher Plato said that if you refuse to participate in politics, you will end up being governed by your inferiors or the person who are not really fit to govern you. So that is also an important uh, thing to understand here for, for us, the students of politics, that we need to learn and not only learn, we need to apply the knowledge of politics in our lives so that the proper people who have the proper knowledge of politics are actually implementing the rules, implementing the regulations, implementing the actual knowledge in the real life. So now let's talk about the nature and scope of government. Government is a political entity that has profound effect on the lives of every human being on earth. And that is a true statement because there is no country that does not have a government. Human societies cannot function properly without any form of governance. Human societies must have government. And they always have been governed by one or two or any kind of governmental systems. States or countries are the biggest unit of human society that start from the family as the smallest one and it is the government that has the power and authority to control the countries including all the families within those countries. So if we look at human societies the smallest unit is the family. The father, the mother and the children. So that is the smallest unit in a society. And these individual smallest unit create a society, they create a village and, and a lot of villages create a district and a lot of district create a division and then we get a state or a, a country. And that country is the highest form of human um, aggregation or human society. And these states are controlled by governments. So that is why we see that government has the power to control not only the uh, macro aspect of human life, but also the micro aspects, how you live, how you talk, how you uh, think even in some countries are governed by the governments. And in general, governments are made out of three different organs. So we will see in the later lectures that there are a lot of forms of governments but usually every government has three main organs or three main bodies number one is the executive or uh, or the you know administrative part and number two is the legislature or the parliament and number three is the judiciary or the courts and these three organs when they work in harmony they create good governance and the state prospers the government as an institution runs by the collective products of labor of the people of that country which is usually collected in the form of tax, fat, duties, etc. So the government is an institution and every institution needs money to run and needs resource. And how are they going to collect the resource? They are going to collect it in the form of tax. And when we look at the history, we will see that even the kings, even the clansmen or the clan kings uh, also had some sort of uh, taxation structure where they collected tax from people who individually were part of the uh, clan or part of the village. And through the collection of taxes, they, uh, they implemented some social policies and usually those were used for protection. In a national government, as the representative of the whole population of a country, rule the people, enact laws, punish offenders, protect rights and properties including borders, and maintain international relations with other governments and collect resources from the people to run itself and to finance development and welfare projects. So. This sentence actually defines what a government is, what a government does also. So what a government does, it enacts laws or creates laws for the people. It punishes offenders who break the laws. It protects the rights of the people and also the properties of the people, which includes the border of the country. So army and the police force are applicable here. And it maintains international relations with other governments outside the border. And it collects money from the people 
who are part of the country to run itself and also to finance development and welfare projects for the people. So now our last topic, necessity of learning government and politics. Why do we need to learn about government and politics? So the Greek general and politician Pericles in 1495 to 1429 BCE or before Christ he said that just because you do not take an interest in politics doesn't mean that politics won't take an interest in you so this is a very profound statement and it is true uh, true still now and it will be true as long as human beings are alive human beings remain this statement is going to be true because politics is such an intrinsic thing in our lives that if we are not aware of it, it is aware of us and it will control our life. So that is why if we want to, uh, if we want to have our rights protected, we need to be aware of the politics. Government's decision and, policy, uh, and policies affect our daily and personal lives and that is why we need to learn about government and how it functions. If we do not learn about government that rules us, we are not going to understand how it creates the laws and how it affects the, us, our daily lives, our personal lives, how we live, how we think, how we uh, interact with other people. All of, this, all of these things are governed by their governmental decisions so that is why we need to learn about the government who is the government how is it run and how can we participate to uh, actually make laws that suit our interests if we want to bring changes to this to the society we must learn about the art of politics because in our endeavors we, we will face oppositions who are well adapted and well versed in political matters so this is also an important thing if you want to change anything that we do not like in the society we need to learn about politics because if we want to change it there are going to be people who do not want to change anything so that is why we need to defeat them in the political field that is why we need to learn about politics in the usa 40 percent of the congressmen are law graduates so as we are learning it as part of the law degree we need to understand that in the first world countries a lot of law graduates are actively participating in politics but in bangladesh currently only 13 percent members of the parliament are lawyers so the latest data shows that only 13% member of the parliament or the uh, parliamentary body Jatiyo Shangshot which is called are lawyers and most seats are occupied by businessmen or career politicians most of the politicians in the country are career politicians they do not have any other meaningful uh, means of income rather than doing politics and they are businessmen because they are uh, they are given shares of some businesses in order to provide the, those businesses with monetary benefits or um, legal benefits, regulatory benefits it is called. So that is why they are called businessmen but they are not really businessmen. They just hold shares in businesses in general sense. But there are certain businessmen who come into, into politics as well but most of them their career politicians therefore learning about government and politics is crucial for the students of law to understand the relationship between the government and the law and to utilize the knowledge of law to make changes into the political field of the country if you want to change if you want to make positive changes we need to know about politics first we need to know about the government first and then we can understand how we can change it then we can uh, plan it and then we can execute our plans so this is the end of the lecture thank you all for participating in the lecture thank you all for um, watching the video and if you have any question regarding the lecture content you can ask in the comment section i will answer accordingly thank you all and see you all in the next video